Šūriu. going live so okay just asking my colleague to confirm that it's all working mm -hmm. okay good Rudolf thank you very much for coming to the Tradimo show here um, live from the Exante office um, yeah your your fund has been one of the most stellar performers in the in the whole world when it comes to crypto and uh, what's what's the combined performance? Seventeen thousand uh, one hundred percent. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. So yes, it's quite it's quite big. Yeah. No, it's it's an incredible achievement, uh, honored by by Bloomberg and many others. Um, what I wanted to ask you is: on Sunday we have the first Bitcoin futures starting to trade. That's obviously for for me it's the biggest the biggest event for Bitcoin since. I don't know since 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 the decision about the fork. I would say, I don't know how how you Indeed. see it like in, in terms Indeed. of the importance. It, you're actually right. I I, I more more than agree with you. <laughs> actually, it, and you can see the chart that the chart agrees with you as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at the chart. So here we have the Bitcoin dollar chart open. We can see that yeah, basically, well, this is an hourly chart that looks like a daily chart for many other assets. But <laughs> let's actually go to the daily chart to see the full craziness. If, it, if we look at the daily chart, it looks like a parabola without any stops. It's a train, with, train without any stops. Yeah. So that, you yeah. cannot do any technical analysis on that type of chart. For sure. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is you could do uh, like a pullback uh, Fibonacci thing, but I mean, it's, it's basically, let's be honest, it's basically meaningless, Yeah, like you said. Exactly, um, yeah. So here we basically recently had some kind of mini correction from 16,500 down to 13,500. Uh, but it depends already which exchange you ask. <laughs> on some exchanges, it hit the 20,000, I think. Um, on others, it stayed far away from there. Then we have some region in the world where people are paying 20% extra. <laughs> so it's... Um, Korea, Zimbabwe. Yeah. Bitcoin price discovery is becoming a problem. Um, so, yeah. I guess the futures are going to help with that in setting some kind of reference price that probably many exchanges are going to follow. Um, or how do you see it? How, how do you see that? Like, which price is going to be the real Bitcoin price? Is it the one that is trading on CME, CBOE, and so on? Or or is it the one that I find at Coinbase, Kraken? It's Bitcoin hard X to actually so think about what will be the real Bitcoin price because even right now with multiple exchanges that we have, if we look only at seven exchanges we, and we look like Bitfinex, Kraken, Bitstamp and Coinbase and some, some Bithump, for instance, the Korean exchange, yeah. we see completely different prices. Yesterday, for instance, so what was it? In Euro scale, Bitcoin was uh, at on Coinbase. Seventeen thousand dollars, while mm -hmm. on uh, Bitstamp it was fourteen thousand yeah. dollars. If we switch the scale, Korea as well had a premium of ten percent. Yeah, yeah. Why isn't there more arbitrage happening in that? Like, why or, or do you do that as there a fund? Is. Like, do you do you buy on the one, sell on the other, and just say like three thousand here, three thousand there? Well, we do not disclose the strategy of the fund <laughs> itself. Yeah. Our okay. our main goal was made that we buy and hold. Yeah. Has was that, the first one. Has that changed we have, now? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe you have, not. You okay, have, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, I cannot disclose it yet, maybe at some point. Yeah, yeah but so, I guess it's my job to squeeze it out of you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, most likely mo one of the strategies. Oh, uh, I think I'm having a little interruption here. One Prairie, second. I think. You... Um, you were you were gone for a little moment there. Uh, can you just repeat what you what you said last? Yes, as the price discovery, as everything is expanding really fast, I think it and the strategies change basically daily. Then of course, most li likely the arbitrage was a thing when it was a thing. Right now, everything is cooling down slightly. Although mm -hmm. I I'm looking at the chart right now and I cannot actually agree with it because Bitcoin is continuing its onward to fifteen thousand six hundred. 
Yep. And maybe my dreams of uh, a consolidated weekend with some maybe temporary rest will be completely cancelled yet again. <laughs> and it looks like it actually. But uh, futures prices will determine a new path actually because speculators will be able to short Bitcoin and there are rumors that uh, there will be an underlying asset which will be Bitcoin itself, which will be bought by NASDAQ, which will be launching at... 10th of December, it's already two days, only the weekend left, and 18th of December, which is the CME, which mm -hmm. is as well, not, basically nothing left, <clears throat> nine days. Yeah. yeah Based on that, uh, if people start buying the underlying assets one to five, because one futures contract on, uh, on CME, for instance, will have five Bitcoins underneath it then we can see that Bitcoin might actually start going down as well, not only up. But I think price discovery is yet to find out about 20,000, 25,000. It's, as I said, back in... Mm, just just one second. Yeah. Um, I can hear everything twice because I haven't been able to mute this year, which I don't know why. Let me just no close that. Okay, I think this is the issue that I'm here at the same time. Okay, so if I mute this or close it down, then that should... Okay. I've just closed it now. I don't know if that shut down the stream or not. I'm just asking my colleague. Just close mm -hmm. Facebook now because it was really annoying. It's still live? Okay. So we can we can continue. Sorry for that. Yeah, so um, basically, yeah, C can you just repeat the last thing? Last thing said? Okay, so regarding futures, I bet. Uh, futures, there's there are rumors actually that mm -hmm. futures will be one times five. So when you're buying one futures contract, you're buying actually five Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, that will result in, oh my God, it's actually going to 15,700 again. No, no rest for <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Yeah. Uh, so basically, you're buying one times five on a scale of twenty thousand dollars. The maintenance margin will be. The what does that mean? Is you have a leverage of one times five. Yeah. And but this time you will be able to go short, which will be marginal requirements as well, depending on the underlying asset. If the underlying mm -hmm. asset uh, shall be going down, then uh, and will be be able to short, then that's a new path. Then maybe we will have more corrections. We will not have parabolas. But I still think that there's price discovery in twenty five thousand, as I said back in November and October. If I'm not, I think mm -hmm. October. I said that uh, we're going to ten k, and and then the later on I said that. I didn't actually mention it, but I was looking at 20,000 and 25,000, but now I think 25,000 and 33,000 is not such a impossible level. We're basically halfway there. So you don't, you don't expect some massive short sellers to come in and push it down to 8,000 or so again? You know, I think if we judge on the perspective of a market maker, uh, then wh why should there be a short right now? If even if this is a bubble, is everyone in? Is uh, for instance, is my grandmother in? Are my friends who are not uh, actually acquainted with financial markets and financial analysis are already in? And I know for a fact that no, they're not yet. Mm -hmm. When when my, for instance, ex uh, schoolmates from yeah. back when I went to high school will start asking me about where to buy Bitcoin, most likely then I'll be looking to short it. And I'll short then in a maybe 20, 50, 20, 30 percent price increase. Because yeah. shorting Bitcoin, first of all, is extremely risky. Second of all, most likely I'm going to short in a such a small amount that it will not not destroy my account even if it goes 100, 200 percent up. Mm -hmm. And if it goes 20 percent more, I'm not going I don't have capital as Michael um, the guy who short, shorted the 2008 bubble. Yeah. Michael Burry. 
but I'm still gonna work, play as Michael Burry. I'm gonna go short at some mm-hmm. point, and I'm gonna stay like like it that way with a small amount. Mm-hmm. And when it falls, it crashes. There's gonna be a lot of orders which I'm gonna have set up. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't think it's possible to short this thing. It's even today we saw a price decrease in 20%. Yeah. It was a great correction, actually. It was an amazing correction, which was healthy for Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And uh, now we're back up. We are not caring about any support and resistance lines. We have like fear of missing an opportunity buying. Yeah. So predict that. <laughs> okay. Short that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, what I'm wondering is uh, what happens when there's a lot of shorts coming in that um, trigger some kind of exit rush on the other exchanges, and the other exchanges crash because they're they technologically are not as sound as as like a futures exchange is, and then um, and also you don't have to like the, the the you the the futures will be settled in cash, so you don't actually have to buy Bitcoin. So Bitcoin doesn't have to go up just because more people on the futures market start buying it. No, completely. But so, still, the retail market needs to buy uh, simple, ordinary Bitcoin in order to actually be in the game. Sim- simple, mm. ordinary people don't have a deposit of 25,000 and they will not want to buy w- one futures contract for 20,000 20, and risk everything. Yeah. So that's, that's the key. Plus, additionally, what I want to say is... Your first commentary, which, what was it? Um, just some, like all the institutions that so far have been warning about Bitcoin being a bubble and so on. If they if they all ah. uh, can together yes. team up yeah. and go in short, they, they could create some kind of rush to the exit of all the people who have been entering above $5,000. I mean, uh, these are people yeah. that now maybe maybe they have even two hundred thousand dollars in their accounts right now and it, it, and the utility of that amount is huge for them if they lose it again they they're gonna be devastated of course but it's gonna happen sooner or later you have to understand that people yeah. people people lose money in these kinds of runs and people lose a lot of money they, people smart money loses money on the way up and dumb money loses money on the way down two 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 basic rules which is always like that <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you're talking about a parabolic chart and shorting it, uh, let's look at the great example, Michael Lewis. Yeah. I, I just, I basically, I just watched for the first time the Great Short. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that movie. And he was shorting uh, the real estate market for how long? Two and a half years, yeah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. He, he said he started early, yeah. and uh, he was in a huge pain about it. And yeah. uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and right now the S&P. It's going up already for a long time, and people were talking about that it's a bubble since 2011. I remember meeting the, the first hedge fund manager I ever met, and he was a successful guy, and I'm sure he yeah. still is. He said, sure, sure, the S&P, S&P 500, all the United States indexes, it's a, it's a huge bubble. We are in 2017, I still don't see how it worked out. Same yeah. with here, the market can stay rational longer than the trader can stay solvent. So yeah, that is that's of course true. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering there, if we if we if there is any chance that we wake up on Monday and um, Bitcoin is at fifty dollars today this Monday. Yeah. No, no, no. Even fifty dollars, it can what it can be, it can go from fifteen thousand to one thousand five hundred, but mm-hmm. not on not on, not this Monday, January. <laughs> Maybe, January maybe, but not this Monday. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> it still it it still has intrinsic value. And when you, when you're shorting Bitcoin, you're going against Jihan Wu. Same thing I told in October. You're going against Jihan Wu, Robert Ver, Bitcoin Jesus, and uh, the rest of the players. Yeah, they're too big to make the market go down. They're gonna in 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 input so much money in the market so that they still have the business. They have a business to run, and okay. it's Bitcoin yeah. mining. Yeah. So. And S&P shorts, so many players are shorting it, it's still not going down. If you short the market, it still goes up because you're, you're creating demand yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah that, is, that is clear. But um, one other question then, altcoins. So um, how do you see the market for altcoins? Like I, uh, some, I, I found a, f- a funny comment that was um, Bitcoin goes up, altcoins go down. Bitcoins go down, altcoins go down. Go down. <laughs> <laughs> Only scenario where altcoins go up is Bitcoin stagnating. Now, well, uh, that's yeah, the how, funny do, how do you thing. see it? How do you see that? Yeah, we we had uh, an interesting feature. We saw interesting scenarios since what August. On August, we saw that 
exactly altcoins they made a huge high they made the the hype was so high everyone was in altcoins everyone was making a million everyone was thinking oh my god i'm gonna be a millionaire driving a lamborghini yeah. uh then it ended it, that was because bitcoin it had already and cryptocurrencies it had what four bubbles already the empty gox the first one to 120 dollars the empty gox bubble the china yeah many crashes altcoins right now two days ago there were a bloodbath right now they're getting back actually to reality I, i'm looking at for instance litecoin and they're at all-time high for instance i'm looking yeah. at the major one litecoin at 100 dollars yeah. uh, ethereum at 455 although crypto kitties is destroying the cyberspace uh, <laughs> ethereum classic 24 like no, they're fine. It's just a question of uh, if someone, because everyone is used to generation of high returns like Bitcoin does, yeah. where it goes 10% in like one, one day, two days. And when they see minus 5% in a day, everyone's like, oh my God, it's stagnating. Everything's falling. You just have <laughs> to find the proper point. Yeah. But uh, do you agree with the assessment that uh, if Bitcoin crashes, the altcoins would also crash? No, actually, because uh, I had Litecoin position opened. I bought it mm -hmm. at $92 this night because yeah. uh, when Bitcoin was at all-time high, I actually sh sold one position at 16000 this, mm -hmm. this night. I woke up, up in stress because my phone was just alarming and waking me up, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, 16000 I was expecting to see it at, like, today, but not in the night. Yeah. And uh, I sold part of Bitcoin, but mm -hmm. I, I work with leverage and yeah. uh, I bought Litecoin instead without leverage and it, I bought it at 92 right now it's at 101 yeah so that's that's a gain like yeah, yeah, why yeah, not definitely. and Bitcoin was falling crazy today it's it's an amazing it's an amazing correction it's already corrected but still yeah I'm I was wasn't actually planning to close it down but 101 and Bitcoin is start going up again although I think it's a bull trap uh, <laughs> okay yeah. At least it looks like it. Uh, then, like, sure, why not? Yeah. It depends on the coin. If you buy some kind of junk coin with perspective of it being 10, 10x and 20x in a year, then um, hold it that long. It won't yeah. go up with the next Bitcoin rise. It'll go up with the technology actually develops. Yeah. Look at Ardor. What it, are your it, What are your top your top altcoin recommendations? I would love to, but if I start disclosing <laughs> it, then I most likely am not going to make any money. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, uh, the thing what I was looking at, I can tell you what I will, well, okay, um, let me check what I can suggest, because I, I can tell you what I'm going to close soon and I'm going to wait a little bit more to rise. But what I just bought, I, I cannot disclose, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to close Vertcoin when it reaches around $10. For instance, it's a great feature, it's a great coin which is completely yet unknown to people. Mm -hmm. Most likely it'll reach around $50 at some point, but not yet. Uh reason for it is it it actually resolved all the issues which are related to Bitcoin mm -hmm. and it's quite decentralized as well. The owner is yet still unknown. Mm -hmm. And he is not public, and the public is actually improving the coin. And well, I bought it when it was one and a half dollars two months ago, and right now it's seven. Yeah, seven point three six. I have the chart open here. Yeah, so basically, I I like shit coins as well. They're, <laughs> they're, they're, they are amazing, but you have to find the the one that makes more money than Bitcoin does. If it doesn't, then you're losing money. Mm -hmm. What do you? Um, how do you see um, like Tetsos and EOS, who are still in the in the token stage, um, but like are one of the more higher market caps in that in that segment? Wait, Tezos? Yeah. Tezos was sued, I think, and it's oh, closed yeah, they're, down. they are being being sued. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think. No, that's that's a complete blasphemy, and uh, I think that's a dead cat. It, I'm not sure they can come back. IOS at the same time, EOS or I, I, I EOS, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, about them, I haven't read that much because I think I didn't like the project or the team, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm not biased towards the people, but I, I didn't like something. It was something fishy, and I didn't go in. I'm, I was looking at IOTA some time ago, yeah. and I, IOTA I missed is that. now number number four of the most of the highest market cap. 
already at at 11 billion yeah. yes i missed i missed that train i i missed it but it's because i have to work as well <laughs> <laughs> Because many people think that when you're starting to go and start trading altcoins and cryptocurrencies, then you can quit your daily job and start doing it all the time. No, don't. Just, just, just bloody don't. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get slaughtered faster than you can ex expect. So, what's your recommendation for um, if if there's somebody now looking at this and they're new to cryptocurrencies? Should they should they wait for the futures thing to launch and for things to cool down a bit or? Um, how do you assess the crypto market overall, the, the market cap overall? I think if you're new to the cryptocurrency markets, I think you should try getting on the loop which is going right now. And you should try not to be greedy enough. Invest something which you are not afraid to lose because this can, be turn, this can turn out completely, completely crazy. Uh, first of all, don't use leverage. If you're new, then for sure do not. And... Uh, Yeah, buy some Bitcoin just just for the sake of it. Why not? It's it's going up and it's gonna continue going up. It's not gonna stop that fast. Mm -hmm. There, there's yet, but if it starts going down, don't sell it. Just buy a little bit more. If it goes da down sub 10k, so the whole hodl approach uh, for you doesn't change just because of the futures market now. No, of course not. Because if to be honest, if you would buy Bitcoin when it was two thousand dollars, and right now it's For, for 15, okay, 15,700 already. Still going up. And it's 15,000 and a half. Would you care if it drops for one or two thousand dollars? No, you don't. You got it so low that you just hold it and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's, if you got it at 8,000 and it goes back to 10,000 and you're that's in with, story. with a larger percentage of your money, then nowhere to exit. Nowhere to exit. Don't. It depends where you bought it. If you, it depends where you bought it. Yeah. So if if you really bought in at like eight thousand, then know your limit. If you're at eight thousand, then yesterday you made one hundred percent. How much else? How how much more do you need? You want to be a millionaire? Well, it doesn't work that way. If if someone bought it at eight thousand, he bought it one month ago. You made hundred percent in a month. Like hedge funds generate hundred percent in four years, yeah. and that's considered wow returns. Just think about how much you want. Yeah. Yeah, people are just used to crazy returns now and might act crazy if they don't get them anymore. That's exactly. And the futures, the futures traders might, yeah, jump on that behavior and squeeze some people out. But yeah, two okay. the year two thousand eight to the year two thousand wasn't wasn't actually different. Everyone saw huge returns. No one wanted to exit the market. Greed destroyed everything. Mm. What's the difference today? Like eight, eight years passed, still everything is the, the same. Everything is still fun. Every, everyone wants more money, even if they made a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, so just to sum it up, you would basically say the futures market can increase some craziness in the very short term, but it's it's gonna, it's not changing the hodl recommendation approach. Um, and um, you would go for altcoins only if they are fairly uncorrelated with Bitcoin or outperform Bitcoin, basically. Otherwise, you would recommend people to stick with Bitcoin. Well, actually, yes, you are correct. But if you're looking at altcoins, then uh, follow some Twitter accounts. Uh, look at professionals that actually do it for a living. Um, Whale Panda, for instance, he's quite a cool guy. I met him actually in person when he was in Riga. Mm -hmm. He's he he's an okay guy. Am Ambroid, yeah, Ambroid as well. He's uh, he admitted that he's a shitcoin trader. Met him as well in Riga when he was at Riga Honey Badger 2017. Uh, he's a cool guy as well. They they and the thing is they're humble. They make 50% on a coin. They're like, oh my god, I made too much. <laughs> they they are not looking for huge returns. They're looking for a good potential value of mm -hmm. pri price ri rise. And follow them, for instance. Look what they do. Take the same principle. Don't be greedy, and you can make every position profitable. Thank you very much. That's wise words to conclude this interview. And yeah, we are all curious how it turns out Sunday night. Indeed. Or when exactly is it starting? Do you do we know Sa the time? Sunday, sun, the 10th of December, 23 E, 
UTC or EET, mm. I don't remember quite. But I've, I'm planning to wake up on Monday and just see how, how crazy everything is. The one That brings me to one last point maybe at the end. Um, sure. Do you, do you know how it will work time-wise? I mean, cryptocurrencies are traded around the clock. Futures markets are open Monday to Friday. And then we have a huge gap over the weekend. Um, I'm really looking forward <laughs> to seeing how that works because I think that is the, that's the mystery which is still unsettled. 20, crypto markets 24-7. Futures yeah. markets twenty four five. Yeah. Does not will not end well if someone doesn't imply weekend trading yeah. will not end well. <laughs> okay. See? Well for all first time futures traders, close your crypto trades before the weekend. <laughs> yep. Okay. Then thank you very much, Rudolf. It's been no great problem. to have you again. Always ha always always lucky to have a chat with you. <laughs> thank you very much. Then Here's speak to you soon. Have a good weekend. Bye.